This is going to be the fourth in the series of um, movies, tutorials, videos for explaining the CRUD app. In the first three, we covered the index and the delete. And in uh, this one, we're going to cover the add. So first of all, let's see the process. When I'm on the uh, catalog and I click add item, I can see that it's simply going to take me to without any PHP or anything, a simple link to a file called uh, called ads.php, which in essence is a form. It's nothing but a form. So let's see how that form works. When I submit the form, by the way, it processes itself and goes back to um, the index. So let's look at it. Here is ads.php. Like most files, it starts with a block of PHP that stretches all the way to line 27. And like most of the files, we're going to skip it for now. Why? Because it's not the first thing that happens. The first thing in the PHP is it's asking, oh, is it my turn to work? How does it ask that? By asking, was the form submitted? But at first, the form is not submitted. So let's look at the form before it's submitted. Let's look at the form just as a form. In the HTML, what do we have in the head? We have, of course, the uh, viewport line. Um, and we have a link to the regular style sheet of the whole application. We also have a link to jQuery. And that's just so we can use the jQuery validate. We have the jQuery validation plugin right here. Um, and it's based on jQuery, so that's, what, that's why we have to link to a hosted version of jQuery. Uh, that plugin also has its own form styling. Remember, this is where it decides whether you know boxes are going to be red and warnings are going to be red and you know valid boxes are going to be green and so on. Something like this. And if I try to submit, all these styles and colors come from the form basic styling if I want to change them. Um, me. Uh, refresh. Then the body, which like all my files have an ID container. The container has a head with nothing but an H1 and a link back to the catalog. Then the form. Now let's look at what's different about this form. It's different from any other forms we've done before in some one specific way. First of all, the form's action. By the way, notice how the attributes are not exactly in the order that we're used to. That does not matter at all. As long as the attributes are written correctly and are there, it doesn't really matter in what order they're written. Action, quote, quote, or an empty action, as we learned, means when this form is submitted, reload this file, adds.php. That's when the PHP on the top is going to jump into action. Method post simply means that the variables are going to be sent with a post method and not appended to the URL. They are in what's called in the headers. Uh, the, only different, the only significance of that is that if they're sent using the post, then the processing code will expect them to be post variables. If I was sending them through get, all of this would say get. Um, we usually, for most forms, use post because uh, it might contain you know, sensitive uh, information that we don't want you know, readable on the URL. Here comes the difference. We've never seen this attribute before. Enc type or encoding type equals multipart forward slash form data. What does that mean? It means, hey, browser, this form, it actually talks to the browser. This form is not just about text. All the forms we've seen before, even for the poll, for the voting, you know, all that stuff, were forms where in the end, all the boxes were text. For instance, item number is text, a string. Item price, that's also text. Even though it's just digits, it's still, you know, characters, it's still a string. Uh, item brand is a string. Item description is a very long string, but it has one more kind of field called a file field. And this is what makes it a multi-part. In other words, when I submit this form, it will submit some text, but it'll also submit a file that was uploaded. Uh, the ability to display this is built into each browser. This is why it looks a little different in each browser. If I go to um, Firefox, add item, come on. 
go that he seems to be a little slow today here it is see how it's a little different looking than the one on chrome instead of choose file it says uh browse are there ways to restyle that yeah but they're not really worth it um because in the end they all make sense uh, and all the user has to do is click it pops up a browser uh, a browser and so on what i'm trying to say is that when we get to that this the look of it and the fact that it pops up a browsing window all of that is done by the browser like whether it's chrome or firefox or a browser on your mobile phone and so on um once it's submitted then it's the job of the server to uh, process it so let's look at the boxes because they're really um some basic ones uh everything is arranged in a table if i change the border to one you will see that it's you know why i arranged it into a table because it's just a way of uh, arranging things side by side in a very easy way in rows and columns and i'm just hiding it by giving it a border of zero uploading let's keep going over the code while i'm doing that um then there's going to be the first row where both columns are like uh, uh, joined together merged and it's going to have the words add item styled as an h2 which is this add item right here that's the first thing and it's not functional it's just you know an h2 after that there's going to be another table row with two TDs, TDs are cells. One cell aligned to the right is going to have uh, the words item name. And then the next cell, which is, you know, just to right next to it, is going to be a regular input text. Its name is item name, item underscore name. Notice that this matches the name of the field in the database. Its ID is also item name, and the ID in this case is for the jQuery validation because I'm telling jQuery validation this field is required so it knows oh item name user didn't fill out anything pop up the uh, warning required see if it already yep here's what the uh, uh, table looks like just so you see why i arranged it in a table it's a table that takes 100 percent of its parent and then it's got um you know each this is row number one this is tr number two which has td 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 this is aligned right just so it appears you know nice and aligned to the box so by default everything's aligned left so if i don't say anything all these are aligned left all these are aligned right just so they look nice uh if i have time you know I'll, I'll leave it like this and at the end i'll change the border back to zero um and the width of the table is 100 percent of its parents so when the container gets smaller it gets smaller with it back to this uh after the field with the item name which is required basically all the fields there are required uh there's another table row which is again has two cells one that has the words item price and the dollar sign and here it is item price and a dollar sign and then the the input on the right side is not type text but type number this means that i'll be able to type only numbers into it to be valid then an attribute that was added in html5 is a step and the step means that i can i'll have steps right here I'll have steps right here. They show up when it's you know in focus, and every time I click the step up, it'll go up by zero, you know by one cent. Now I can change that, but I think it makes sense for it to go up by one cent because in our database we made this field double seven comma two, which means it's going to be seven digits out of them two decimals. Here are my two decimals, so it matches you know dollars and cents. We can have you know two decimals for the cents. The name, which is the variable name that's going to be sent out of it is item price and also its id is item price and it matches what we'll have already on the database and of course it's required then item brand is a text required um, and again named like the one on the database uh, then the next row is about item description this time instead of an input i'm using text area 
Now, why uh, text area? Because text area allows me to have rows and columns, which means it's going to have eight lines, each line uh, 21 characters. So it's going to look something like this. This is what a text area looks like. Remember, the text area is for the description, which might be a little longer. So it has 21 characters widthwise and eight rows heightwise. The user can always grab this and make it bigger if they want to type something longer. I can disable this resizing, but why should I? It's convenient for users. Um, after that is the row for the item image. This is a, a field type that we've never seen before. First of all, of course, just the words item image on the uh, row on the uh, on the column on the left and then input type equals file its name is item image and its id is item image just like in our database now what does it mean that it's type file it means the browser automatically knows to give it this look the browser automatically knows to give it a button called choose file and it's the browser that pops up a browsing dialog when i choose something and I can choose, you know, like a picture, like this. When I open, the, it's not being set, sent yet. Again, it's the browser that says, if you submit this form, it will submit, you know, this JPEG. Last but not least is a submit button with value submit, which means, you know, the words submit are in it. Uh, right after that, a very simple JavaScript that simply connects or uh, links the id item uh, add item form to the validate function why because that's the id of the form here it is the id of the form is add item form it basically says hey jquery validation that's the form i want to validate notice that i'm not giving it any extra details so it's going to just put the generic uh, words required whenever i tell it that something is required like this if i click submit it's just going to see that all of these are required and they have not been um, filled out the next part is what happens after I click submit let's look at the PHP in other words this PHP will jump into action only after the form has been submitted well even before it's been submitted it links to the config we know why because we need to connect to the database and it also brings in a function called upload function which is going to be the subject of a totally uh, separate tutorial the upload function the upload function is the one that takes the image and you know cleans it up and resizes it and uploads it to a folder on the database and then takes its name and puts it into the uh, the database as a string and so on um, the job of the upload function is to come back with a name of a function after it's been uploaded so the PHP is asking hey was the form submitted how does it know if the variable submit has been posted then it goes okay well first of all the first thing i want to do is declare a variable called item image run the function upload image and whatever result it comes back with that's going to be the item image as we will discuss in class what we really upload is the image to a folder on the database, uh, sorry, to a folder on the server, but we don't enter an image into the database, base, we enter the name of the image into the database. The name of the image is a string. The job of the upload function, other than uploading and cleaning and so on, is to return with a name. If I opened it for a second, even before we explained it, at the very end, this upload function returns a name. And that's going to be the image name we're going to enter into the database back to the ad then it simply collects all the other um, inputs it goes okay so what do the user post as item name what did they post as price what did they post as brand what did they post as the you know the nice long description then an insert sql that we compose we compose okay we're going to insert into the table here's our famous array of fields and the word keyword values followed by the array of values and as always there's got to be perfect symmetry between the two arrays i'm going to insert into item name item price item brand item description and item image and again remember what we're inserting is the name of the image 
which is going to be uploaded to a separate folder on the server, a folder called item images. Um, and here are all the variables that the user submitted. Notice that there is no item ID because that's going to be generated um, automatically with uh, auto increment. And after it's uh, composed, we're going to send the query. And after query is successful, we're going to back, go back to index. So the way it's going to work is item name, let's say BBB. Item price. Notice that if I try to be smart and type RR, it doesn't let me because it's defined as a number. Now, on some browsers, it'll let me type letters, but when I try to submit, it'll tell me that it's not really you know, the right type. So that depends on the browser. But in any case, the, very, the uh, validation is going to prevent me from putting anything other than numbers. Now, the beauty of this is that even if I type 55, when I submit it, because in the database, this field was defined as 7, 2, in other words, set up to 7 digits, but will always have two um, decimals, it'll actually be inserted as 55.00 by default. I don't have to type the point zero zero by myself. Um, item brand, let's also say that it's, um, you know, JJJ, some blah, blah, blah description. Remember, text is unlimited, so I can keep on going. I can even hit return and so on. Um, because it's going to be defined as predefined, so it re uh, preserves line breaks. Then, I will choose a file that I want to upload. Let's say, I don't know, I'm going to select um, this one. And when I submit, it's going to process itself and send me back to index. Notice that it takes a little more time because if the file is bigger, it takes you time to upload. And here it is. And it created a new item. Um, its ID was automatically generated. Here's its name. Here's its price. Each one of them has a modify and a delete. And modify already knows that it's, look at this corner, uh, that it's going to modify. If I click, it's going to modify ID 11. If then I delete, it's going to delete. Um, it wants to delete item number 11. Uh, in the next tutorial, we are going to go over the modify function. Now, a quick glance into it. What's different about the modify function? The difference between add and modify, in other words, between you know um, create and update, is the fact that when I click modify, it looks like a very similar form when it comes up. It's exactly the same form as add, only the difference is that it queries the existing item and pre-populates the existing items there or the existing values there. So if I don't change it, I'm resubmitting them and they're, they're not changed. The whole idea is that it's like an add um, form, but with all the values it already has, so I'm free to change a word here, there, and so on, or change the image. It even gives me an option to change the image. If I don't change the image, the image stays the way it is. But that's going to be on the next tutorial.